All right, once again, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever we are joining from the different part of the world. My name is Abiola David. I'm from Lagos, Nigeria. Once again, I want to sincerely apologize for being behind the schedule. It's due to the Thames challenges. I'm so sorry for that. Now, very quickly, because of our time, I will just proceed to the presentation that I have for us. We'll be looking at, and first and foremost, I want to appreciate uh, Mr. Mike, a good friend and a big brother for the invitation. Thank you so much for inviting me on your platform. It's a great privilege for me to be here. So let's just dive into what exactly I have in stock for us. Now we'll be looking at how to integrate Excel and Power Automate to send you know, bulk emails you know, to as many email addresses as possible. And also we'll be doing some formula gymnastics, okay, just to look at some formulas. Now, due to this presentation, I will just start with the formulas first, and then I will cut in it between to take the Excel plus Power Automate, okay? Or let me just, let me take the Power Automate first then, and we come back to Excel, to the formulas rather. Okay, just a moment. All right, let's start with this formula anyway. Now, we'll be considering some really nice things in Excel, just like the new dynamic array formulas, and of course, how to use the um, PDF to Excel on hide multiple sheets, how to normalize our data. Now, let's just say an example of a PDF of a dynamic array formula. Now, we have this kind of data, just an Excel transaction data. Now, previously, if you want to actually filter this kind of data, you use what's called this, you know, filter buttons, okay? Or you come to the data tab of the ribbon and you filter your data. But with the dynamic array function, such as the filter function, you do not need to do all those old school method. Now, with the filter function, you can easily filter your data based on the criteria you specified. Now, let's just make sense of our data set. Now, we have these other dates showing all through to six amount. Now, in here, I have two drop downs, okay? These are drop downs showing the unique customer category, which is column A, and also we have all the brands in column K2 for all the brand here in column D. Now let's deploy the filter function and see how it works. Now all we need to do is just type equal sign as you know, and you type in the filter function. Now the filter function filters or it narrows down a range or an array based on the given criteria. Now you can do a single criteria and multiple criteria filtering. Now let's do a single criteria and see how it works. Now the filter function requires two compulsory arguments and one optional argument. Now the array is exactly the data you want to filter, okay? And the include will be based on the criteria you specified. Now this data, of course, it's already formatted as an Excel table. So we can actually just select the entire data by looking for this diagonal black pointed arrow. So that will select the entire data. Now, in here we have this name of the table, okay, which is data underscore filter. That's the meaningful table name given to this data. And then you move to the include argument. Now, the include argument will be based on the criteria you're going to specify. Now, let's do a single criteria. Now, let's say you want to filter all the customer category that are equal to the selected customer category in cell K1. All you need to do is to give the entire many sides, okay, select the entire data, excluding the header. And of course, we can see this is structured reference nomenclature, which is showing the name of the table. And in square brackets, we have the name of the column that we are referring to. Now, I want to check whether it is equal to the selected value that is the unique customer category in cell K1. Now, because we are working with dynamic arrays, we do not need to lock K1 because it's going to spill to the neighboring 
you know, rows below and the columns across. Then we can just close the filter formula. Now the if empty is an optional argument, so we're going to exclude that. So close the filter formula and then you can control enter. OK, so we have the data already filtered based on the criteria that we specified. Now you can use different operators. You can use the equal sign, less than, greater than, and so on and so forth, which I'm going to show some of us now. Now, let's say I come to this cell K1 and I change to another you know, customer category by pressing Alt down arrow key. Then I can select Platinum and everything will update. OK, so let's say I choose, you know, gold. It will automatically update without impacting the main you know, source data. Now, this is a single criteria okay. feature. Okay. Now, if it's... Sorry, just Sorry. not apologies for breaking into your session. Uh, OK, is it possible you can... Yeah, I, I, I was careful not to say it before, but since some people have raised it, I said, let me say, but you, you will be a better judge. So because you shared the window, uh, some of like when you're typing in the formula, the, okay. you know, that place where you said the uh, this is optional, all those ones we don't see. So we are thinking that if it's convenient, if it's possible uh, that you can share the entire screen, otherwise oh. I don't think we will manage it. <laughs> oh, so OK, you can see the entire screen. We can't see some of the like when you're typing a formula, you know the the two tip that comes up. Okay, do not see okay. And many All right, let me sometimes you say we don't see. Okay, so are we? Can you see my screen clearly? Can I confirm? Uh, huh? Yes, but it's it tied more to the way you shared the screen. You shared okay. just the Excel application. Okay. And you try to stop sharing and share the entire screen. Okay, well, let me just right. okay. if it's let me not stop sharing you know, to be good. If it's proving too difficult, will you go back to that one? <laughs> okay. All right, let me reshare. Now can you see it clearly, please? It's coming up. Uh I think it's the same. Is it the same? Yeah. Well, let me ask you, are we okay with, at least you got the old formulas, are we okay with this so we don't detract too much? When you want to do the power automate, are we, are you going to need to go to another tool outside of this exam? Okay, in, okay, let's start with the bulk SMR, the bulk made and the power automate. Okay, let me just start it down. Let me be very sure that you're seeing what I'm you know, sending across. Okay, it's coming up. Okay, can you see this clearly, please? Okay, so I we see the Excel. Okay. Well, don't worry, we'll, my, we'll go along. So yes. But uh, I want to be very sure that you are seeing my data, the presentation, not just yes, to... Yes, we are seeing the presentation, we are seeing all that is on your screen. Okay, or maybe I should just increase the zoom. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Carry on. Okay. Sorry for All the right. okay. seconds taking up again. <laughs> okay, no problem. Let me just continue with the filter formula. Okay, just a moment. Okay, so I'm just going to take the filter again. Of course, as I said, this is the main data. Okay, this is the main data. And this is the criteria that we have. We have in one is cell K1 and in K2. Now just come to the top cell where you want the formula to actually take place. That is cell J5. So deploy the equal sign, the filter function. And of course the array is the entire data. So I'm just going to select the data from here. Control shift right down arrow key control backspace to move up and I said this is the name of the table data underscore filter so to factor in our single criteria we put in a comma and for the include argument 
we need to give the many side of this customer category and then we we'll check whether it is equal to the unique customer category in K1. Then we we'll close the parentheses and control enter. So that will automatically filter the data based on the criteria we specified. And as many of us know, these are what is called the neighboring columns that the formula spills to. Okay, this is the main criteria, gold. So when we change this to, let's say, platinum or silver, it will automatically update. And this is a single criteria filtering. Now, to make it multiple, we need to modify the formula by pressing F2, which opens the formula up. I will delete the close parentheses, and then I'm going to just open parentheses here because we need to. This is the single criteria, and then I close this parentheses. And because we are doing an operation, I'm going to use the multiplication sign, which is this is first criteria, and the next one is the second criteria. Open parentheses, and of course we are interested in the brand column, which is column D. So I select the entire column and then want to check if it's equal to the selected unique brand in K2. And we close the second criteria with the red and we close the filter formula. So control enter, then the data is now narrowed down further. So we have the two criteria now. We have records showing for brand that are equal to Rolls Royce and silver. Now, if we change these to, let's say, limousine, everything updates. And of course, this one also updates if we change it to, let's say, gold. Now, this is a way of using the dynamic filter function. Now, you can even use greater than or less than and so on operators. Let's say I want to check this data that were filtered, we want to check the one that is greater than 300,000 in terms of six amounts. It's going to be limousine gold that is greater than or equal to 300,000 six amounts. So for that, we're going to use yet another operation, the AND operation, putting the multiplication sign. And let me just scroll to the left to the right so I can see what we are doing clearly. OK, so we have the AND operator, the operation rather, open parentheses, and we want to check this six amount column. OK, I want to check whether it is equal to or greater than or equals to 300 benchmark. So just type in 300,000 without the commas. So one, two, three, and I close the third criteria and I close the filter formula and control enter. So we can actually see we are seeing brand that are equals to limousine, customer category gold, and the sales amount, which is greater than or equal to 300,000. Now, if we do control shift down arrow key, we can see that there are only 64 records that satisfied the three criteria that were specified. So this is, a game changer, you know, a way of filtering in Excel using the filter dynamic array function. Now, let me just go to this next presentation. Now we have this kind of data, the same data also. And let's see how to use this, create a cross tabular calculation or report using the sum if function. Now, sum if function, as many of us know, is one of the most vital and widely used function in Excel, okay, which sums based on the given criteria. Now the sum if is able to do more than one criteria, but the sum if is only do can do a single criteria. So I've always preferred to use the sum ifs because you can do as many criteria as your data can contain. Now we have the same data that spans between 2013, February 2013 to February 2017. Now, these are all the dates. I want to create a report that will be showing the total sales amount for 
each of the month and also each of the payment method, which could be Fossil Pay, Skrill, Perfect Money, etc. Now, I'm just going to create all the payment method here using the combination of dynamic array formulas and the transpose function. So, equal sign, let's start with the sort. Have it in ascending order and also we want the unique values. Now, we need the array. The array is exactly what we want to return the unique value from. Now, all I need to do is to select the entire column with the black pointed arrow, which gives me all the value, excluding the header. And then I can close. Now we can see we have by column exactly once. Now these are optional argument because they are wrapped inside the square brackets. So we don't need the optional argument. So we are only interested in the array. So I close the unique and the sort. Now, when we control enter or enter, I actually prefer to use control enter because it saved me a lot of time to having to go back up. Now, when we do enter or control enter, then the data will spill down, okay, which is not what we want. Now, I actually want it to be lined up in row one, okay? So I'm just going to wrap the transpose function round right about the O formula, which is going to give me in terms of in the row. So we have the first pay, master, card, Nathela, and so on. Now, this is the first step. Now, let's see the second step. Now, don't worry, I actually apply what is called in the free spin here. So that's why you couldn't see all the stuff when I click Control Enter initially. Now, let's do the calculation equals sign sum ifs. Now, the sum ifs, as we know, add the cell specified by a given set of conditions or criteria. So you can have up to 64 criteria or conditions long. So for the sum range, as many of us who are using sum ifs or who know sum ifs, it has to be the range that contains the number that you want to sum based on the criteria range one and criteria one. <clears throat> now for the sum range, we want the sales amount column, okay? And then we can put in a comma and for the criteria range one. Now we actually have this date. Now this is February 2015, which is going to be 1st of Fe February 2015, 1st of March and so on. Now this is the upper bound date. And we also need the lower bound, that is the end of that month of February, of March, and so on. Now, for the criteria range one, we have the date column here in column A, other dates, comma. <clears throat> and for the criteria one, we need to use the greater than or equal to operator. Okay, so I'm going to do inside double quotation, I want to check which one is greater than or equals to, then I close the two operators. And I use the concatenate to concatenate that with the start of month, which is February 2015. Okay, now I'm going to lock the appropriate you know, columns and the rows, but, but let's just go ahead. For the criteria range two, we need the same order dates, okay, and, and comma. And for the criteria two, I'm going to use inside double quotes less than or equals to use the ampersand to compact it. Okay, so I use the ampersand to concatenate that which now I need to get to the end of each of this month. And because of that, I'm going to use the EO month, that is end of month function, date function. So just type in EO month. Now, as we know EO month returns the serial number of the last day of the month. So for the start date, of course, it's going to be this, the value in cell J26. And we want to retain or stay in the end of the particular month that we provided, of the study we provided. So comma. So for the month, I'm, going to, I'm just going to put in zero, which is going to give me end of February 2015, end of March, and so on and so forth. So I close the EO month formula and we are back to the sum ifs. Now the last criteria, which is the criteria range three, is the payment method. So comma. So criteria range three is going to be this payment method in column C. So we select the entire data. 
comma and for the criteria three i'm just going to provide this unique value here that is in k1 now i don't need to also select the entire you know row because this result here first up here and the rest they are result of dynamic array speed ranges so all i need to do is to deploy what is called the pound sign <clears throat> So the pound sign or the hash sign will select the entire data in that row or in that range. And that's all I need to do. Now, let's just ap apply the appropriate you know, cell reference. Now, because we are dealing with you know, date, which is in this column J, I need to ensure that I logged column J so that when the formula is being copied across the columns, the J will not switch to K, L, M, and so on. So I'm just going to come here and press F for key. One, two, three. So we have effectively locked down the column J. And also, we need to do the same thing here. J26, F for key. One, two, three. And of course, I may not need to lock this because it's going to work pretty fine. But let's just lock it by locking the row one, F for key one two and that's all so we can control close the sum ifs and control enter now i can see that the result spills to the neighboring columns and then we can just copy it down or oh, let's just drag down amazing okay let's and you see, oh, oh, okay. Oh, excuse me. I all right. Let me just get this. Okay, I need to move this up. Yeah, Control X. Okay, I skip. Okay, let me just get rid of this. Okay, so this is where. Okay, I'm just gonna change this to J to rather not J26. F for key one two three. And also, this one has to be J2. So let me just delete this six. And everything is cool. So control enter. Oh, it's giving us zero. Let's check it out. Okay. F2. Okay, oh, let's just select the entire range. It's wrong. Okay, let me just run the formula again. Equal sign sum is. We select the entire six amount, comma, and we need this other date, comma, and less than or equals to, we concatenate that with this value here, F4K, one, two, three, comma, and again for the criteria range two other dates, comma, less than or equal to, and we concatenate that with the end of month, EO month, and we need the end of this month, F for key again, one, two, three. And then we want the end of that particular month. Close the formula. And for the criteria three, we want the payment method equal to this selected value here. F for key one, two, close parenthesis, control enter. Okay. And okay, this formula control enter. All right, so we have, have the result for you know month of February 2013 and for faster pay. Now, when I copy the formula across, it's going to give me a bunch of zeros. Okay, it's, good, it's not going to work now, except this faster pay is going to work pretty fine. So, what I'm going to do to achieve the result I want is I'm going to copy this value here and I'm going to select the entire range. Okay, let me just select here up to. February 2017, and we can do control V. Now we have the results for each of the payment method as well as the date. Then we can just do control shift right down arrow key and control shift four to apply the currency specified in our original settings. Okay, so we have achieved the report, the cross tab report for the date and the payment method. So this is powerful in Excel. So you can actually use let and lambda function to achieve even this kind of similar operation. 
So this how to use, you know, some is to create a cross tab report. Now let me quickly go to the um, book, Excel and the Power Automate. So let me just stop sharing and let me switch over to, if you have questions, I'm going to take the questions at the end of the presentation. Okay. All right, so let's just see how to integrate Excel and Power Automate together to you know, send book email. Now, I have this sample data already formatted as an, okay, it's already in a range. So I'm gonna format it as an Excel. And then I'm gonna save a copy of this workbook on the one drive for business. You can even save it on your SharePoint. So either of the two location is pretty fine to achieve the outcome that we are looking at. So I actually have a copy in my OneDrive for now, but the first thing to do is to, of course, press Ctrl T or Ctrl L to format the data, okay? So just click on OK, and the data will be formatted as an Excel table. So you can always give a meaningful name. Let me just call this one, um, let me just call it your business edge. Okay, now we have given a meaningful name to this table. So we need to go ahead and save a copy on the OneDrive for business or, or SharePoint. Now there are a couple of ways you can do that. You can come to the file tab and click on save us, or you can even just click on this auto save button. So when you click on this auto save button, then we have this option that allows you to save on your OneDrive. Now, before you can actually achieve this operation, you need to be properly signed in into your tenant, okay, your office. You need to sign in properly. But if you do not sign in, it will prompt you to do so. So I've signed in properly, and then I can go ahead and select this OneDrive to save a copy. So let's save a copy and see. Okay, just a moment. Now, after we save a copy, we're going to see the auto save button turned on. It will be available now. Now, this data, simple data, it's actually showing records for employee name, the date of hire, the salary, and very importantly, let me just move this, okay? Very importantly, the email address of each of these employees. Now, I actually have Mr. Mike's email address here. And of course, I have my own, my bunch of email addresses here. Now you need to actually have it ready to prepare the data in the right way. Now we have the auto save button turned on. So if you go to the your office, of course you're going to be able to see the file stored or saved over there. Now the next thing to do is to ensure that you insert the flow that says the Power Automate Microsoft flow. Now to do that, come to the I've, I've done the insertion. I've inserted it as an heading, but to insert, just come to the insert button. And insert button, you click on get addings. So you click on get addings and just search for Microsoft Flow. Okay. And then you just click on insert. That's the way to have it. So I have it here already. Now, since I have already saved a copy on the in my office, so I can actually in the OneDrive for business, so I can actually click on this flow to create my flow from the scratch and then set up the triggers that will automatically send the email address to all the selected rows that we're gonna select from our data. Now, you can do this on desktop if you have M365 or Office 365, or you can even do it on Excel for the web, okay? So I'm gonna do this from the desktop, so wait for this flow tax pane to come up. Again, you need to sign it. If you do not sign it, it will prompt you to do so. So let me just you know, undock this and move it here as we await the page to come up. Okay, so if you have questions, please just have the questions you know, ready. We'll take all of them. So you can see that I've signed. That's why I can see this sign out. So I don't need to sign out. All I need to just do is to stay there. Now we have currently no flow for this Excel file. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is to click on this nail button 
and then we have two options to create from you know templates but we want to start from instant cloud flow so we want to start from the scratch so i click on that and then oh Thank you. something went wrong okay i think this let me just cancel this i think something went wrong. let me just click on it again so we need to actually set up the flow triggers okay we'll just wait for this to come up All right, so you can actually send mail to as many contacts as possible. If I have used this method to send mails to more than 1,000 email addresses and all of them receive the mail, I mean 1,000 plus. So it saves a lot of time. And the mails are delivered instantly once you run the flow. Okay, so you can actually just give a meaningful name to your flow. Let me just call this one, you know, M. Um, salary and you click enter now for each of the selected row you need to actually connect to where your data is stored okay now you remember the name of this particular workbook is bulk email using excel and power automate so i need to check the location now the location is one drive for business and then in that location we need to connect to the specific library which is one drive and from that library, document library, we need to now select the file. Okay, so I click on this file, and we have quite uh, many of them. Okay, I think this is it. Let me check whether I think. Okay, Bulk email. Okay, I'm gonna believe this is it. All right. So we have connected to the file, to this file, and then we need to select the name of the table, which is of course what we named. You remember? your base edge. So just select the name of that particular table. So it is very essential that you format your data as an Excel table. Otherwise, it will not work because everything works with tables. So having done that, you can actually set up some additional inputs, but we don't need that for now. I'm just scroll down here. Now we need to click on the next step. OK, now in the next step, we need to select our triggers, which is going to be or the action we want to perform. So I'm just going to search for mail or let me just type in, you know, uh, mail. And then it will narrow down the data. OK, so we have this action to perform. So we want to send an email notification. So I click on this. Option. And then we have the platform to choose the email address that we want to send it to. Now, when I click on this inside this uh, box, we have all these, you know, rows that we can select. Now we have this email, so I'm just going to check for email formatted. OK, so it's going to send it to all these email addresses. That's the beauty of this you know, flow. And then you can, you know, select the, the entire or the subject. Let me just put it on um, salary. Let me be salary. Okay. Four. Now, even here, you can even select a row. Let's say for each of these employees. So you can just put in the name of the employee or let's use, okay, let's use that name. So let me just find date of hire or employee name. So I'm looking for the um, formatted one. Okay, this is it. So it's going to be monthly salary for Abila David, monthly salary for a degree and so on. OK, so that's the subject. And finally, we can set up the body of the mail. So let's say I then I want to get the name of the employee again. I, you know, Abila David, I, a degree, I, Joanna Bone and so on. So let's go ahead. OK, let's say kindly find April salary below so i'm just going to grab the salary row so let's check for the salary row now i'm going to choose the formatted also so that we can have this dollar sign coming up with it very essential so i click on this let's just close it and say thank you or let's say something else okay your 
ID and let's select the employee ID. So let's check for the employee or date of hire. Your date. So let's select the date of hire and let's close the mail. Thanks. So this is going to be the action. We have set up the whole thing. And very importantly, we need to click on save after we have set up the action to perform. So we'll click on save. So it's saving it. And then we can proceed to run the flow. So let's scroll up and click on this back to previous page. So everything is looking good. So I click on this back. And then we can see that our flow is properly set up and we can just select the entire room. It's not compulsory. And then we, before we click on run, we can go through it. If there's any need to readjust or to edit, we can always edit. But everything is fine in our case. So I click on run. So we have the flow ready to run. And OK, you see, sign in. This flow uses the following apps. Of course, I've signed in already. So my name, the owner is Abela Biola, and I click on continue. And finally, we click on run flow. Can you see your flow run successfully started? To monitor it, go to the flow runs. Now, immediately we click on that, all the email, this, the message rather, is already delivered to all the emails specified. So if I check my abela.david01 at yahoo.com and the rest, or if Mr. Mike check his own, you're going to see this email for Eddie Green. So the flow has successfully gone to each of the emails. And this is the power of sending in a bulk email address. You can send it to as many people as you want. And you can even resend the flow again. And you can even save. You can even delete. Now let me just you know check my I'm just stop sharing and check my mail as we you know bring it to a close I'm just okay I've got in mind and I've put the screenshots in the chat box okay good oh good thank you so thank you well done so that's saving the time so you can actually see that you can send email to as many people as possible and it will deliver so that's the beauty of working with Excel and Power Automate you can do it on your desktop. All they need is the M365 or Office 365 in you know, a subscription, and it's going to work. Now, another thing I will just show us is uh, because of our time, let me just show us this um, Power Query custom data type. Okay, it's currently available in Excel Better Channel, and I believe um, the current channel. So you can send. You can actually collapse your data. Okay, to minimize you know, your screen. Now, we have this sample data already. Again, we need to format as an Excel table, and we need to get this into the Power Query. So what I'm going to do is, you can come to this data type of the ribbon under the Get and Transform. Now, we have this new button, this from sheet. Now, this from sheet allows you to import dynamic array results into the Power Query. I have a video on that on my YouTube channel. So this is a new feature. It's a powerful one. It replaces from you know table slash range. So we have it in the better channel if you have a better channel. Now let's go to what we want to do. You can click on this get data, or you can just right click, and we just want to get the data you know from sheets, and it's going to load the data into the Power Query. So when the data gets into the Power Query, then you can do some transformation if you need, or you can just proceed to creating your Power Query custom data type. So let me just you know wait for that. Okay, I need to. Okay, yeah, the data is not formatted as an Excel table. All right. So if I have questions, we can be taking it as we get this into the Power Query. So as to save time. Any question? Well, I'll be, I'll be putting it in the chat box. Uh, okay. Just some comments which I've been answering. Uh, okay. Someone has, will it be possible to write 
VBA code to automate the same process of um, this bulk email? Oh yes, yes, of, of course. Yeah, in, in fact, before we have this advent of you know, power automate, of course, there's a way you write you know VBA code that will send to all the email addresses you want. So you can always use your VBA, but that's going to be a long process when we have a more shorter way of getting things done nowadays. Okay, so you don't need VBA code. Well, if you still want to do, why not? You can always write a VBA code, but that's going to be for super users. But since we have this, you know, way of doing it, then it is more suitable to to um, use this method. Okay, uh, let me. See. I'm, I want to bring my Power Query. It's still coming up. Okay, just to sneak this one in. So one person okay. wants to be certain if you will get the practice file. At the oh end. yes, I will make the practice practice file to, available to Mr. Mike. I will make it available so. If they have their email addresses with you, we can only send it to them. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. So I'm trying to bring up to switch to my power query. It's not coming up here. I can't see it here. Oh, I think Zoom is, I mean, Teams is not allowing me to bring my power query up. Okay. Zoom is not allowing me to bring the Power Query on. But the data is already in the, in the Power Query editor now. So I can see, I believe you can see the Excel in the, the Power Query. Hi. Okay, let me just redo this. So let me close this for now. I'm trying to let me just discard this and but anyway you can always get it into the power query and just create your custom data type and you can load it back to excel and everything will work fine so things is actually not allowing them to do that anyway let me just move to another new thing that is coming in excel or that is just so fresh and that's the part of using the auto expand drop down now in the time past before this new feature comes up you know, if you want to create, okay, let me just get this one out. In the time pass, if you want to create an auto expand drop down, you need to do two things. First and foremost, you need to format your data as an Excel table, okay, just like this. And also, you need to create named ranges. Okay, let me just, you know, create, do what I'm trying to talk about. And uh, paste. Okay. Okay, now this data, of course, it's in an Excel table. Okay, now for us to have an auto expand in the time pass in the old school method, after you format your data as an Excel table, you'd need to also create a named range. Okay, now, now in the new era or in the new release version of Excel that I have better channel, you don't need to create named ranges. All you need to do is let's say we have this you know, power, we have this data, and let's create our drop down. Come to the data tab of the ribbon, and we just need a list data validation. Okay. So I click on this list, and we can provide a source. The source is this our range. So we select the entire range and enter. So when we do control down arrow key, we have you know this selection available to use. Okay, let me just expand this. Now, you discover that the last payment method here is F or Ethron, okay? Now, with the new school, I don't need to create named ranges. All I need to do, now, if you check here also, you discover that the last entry here, the last payment method here is F. Now, when I add a new one, let's say Naira, okay, as the new payment method, Let's just generate some number. No, this is not compulsory. Okay. Now, after I included Naira, the table has grown. Okay. It has expanded because this is the way table behaves. 
when the new data is entered in the next empty row or empty cell below, it will be incorporated into the data. So the table has grown and we can see this little triangle. Now, when I come back here, instead of seeing the last one, which is Earth, I'm going to see Naira because the table has grown. OK, so we have this one here, Naira. So no need to create named ranges such as something like this. I'm just create to show time by name ranges. I'm going to select the entire data here. Now I'm going to do Control Shift F3, which will bring the create names from selection. Now our data is in the top row, okay? So I'm just going to click on OK. So after I've done this kind of thing, then we can now go ahead and use this. Now we have the. Um, let me check. Uh, da, 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 let me let me come to the formula star. Okay, let me check the name range to see the name. Well, let me just you know rename everything you know once again. Uh, let me just call it um, sample. Okay, so as to save time. Now, when I come to this name box, I can actually see sample. Okay, which gives me the entire. No, I don't need. I'm not going to include the oh, sample name. OK, so we have when I have this, when I click on this, it's going to give me an entire range. OK, excluding the header. I don't need to include the header. So what I'm going to do is to use that name, the named range inside the data validation. So I'm going to come to the data validation again and click on allow a list. And then we can do F3. The F3 will bring out the paste name. So let me just click on the source F3. OK, so when I press the F3, I have the paste name where I can select any of the name range created. So I can actually select the sample new and that's all I need. OK, now when we come here, we're going to see Naira, OK? So let's assume we are adding a new payment method. Let's call it, you know, GBP. OK, and let's just generate one or two numbers here. Yeah, let me check in this cell. OK, so when we do control down arrow key, alt down arrow key rather, we have the GPP included. Now, this is the old way of achieving the auto expand in Excel with data validation. But if you have M365 beta channel, I believe you're going to be able to do it without the need to create a named ranges. All you need to do is the format your data sanitary table, add the new data or records, and the data validation will automatically grow. And that's the cool feature. It, it saves you a lot of time. And also we have finally, another new feature in Excel that allows us to hide and unhide multiple sheets. Let me just hide this, some of these sheets. I'm going to hide this. I selected three of them together. Now, in the time passed, except if you want to use you know, VBA operation, you only unhide each of the sheets one after the other. But with the new feature that allows you to unhide multiple sheets. You can unhide as many as you want within a second. So let's unhide. Click on any of these sheets, any one of them, and you click on unhide. Now in the unhide box, we have all the sheets that you have hidden. Now in the time part, you have to be clicking on each of these one to be unhide them, to unhide them rather, you know, which actually takes time. But with this, all you need to do is select one of them. Let's want to unhide all of them, and we just select the hold the shift key down and select the last one, and all of them will be selected. So just hold your shift key down and select the last one you want, and click on OK. So we have all the sheets on hidden. It comes back. So this is a cool feature that is new in Excel. So I hope you actually enjoy my little presentation. If you have questions, let's please take the questions. Over to you, Mr. Mike. 
Thanks a lot. So yes, I have seen some questions there. And if anybody else has a question, you can raise your hand and ask. Uh, so it becomes a little more interactive than me just reading. But let me read out the ones that I already have seen in the chat box. So there was one someone was asking about doing that power automate for big day. So okay. let me look for let me look for it so that I will read it. Okay, yeah. So David Adejumo is asking, please, is there a way to use Power Automate to send emails to people for their birthday on different dates? And, and also to insert pictures while sending this. Yes, now, um, if you want to send Power Automate to send email to both people, now, you're going to send it to all of them. Now, for you to send to people for their specific birthday, let's say, you know, this one is going to be celebrating, you know, next week, next two weeks, and so on and so forth. That is not possible based on my findings yet. You only send it to all of them, to all the email addresses, okay? Not based on dates, but based on the email address you provided. So once you, it's just like um, automation, you just load the mail. They want to send to all the contacts or the email address. You just send it once and for all to them. So it's not really possible with Power Automate, I mean, with this particular particular operation, to send uh, messages to each of these email addresses based on the best days they have. Over to you. Okay. I'm looking if there is any other, other uh, questions. I think that's the... That's the only one. The other ones are people asking, is the registration recorded? Will we get recording? Okay. So, uh, okay, two people's hand are up. Great. So, I don't know whose hand came up first. Uh, okay. Uh, one person has dropped his hand. What happened? Okay. So, Ogaido, your question, sir. Okay. I have written, thank you very much. I have written my question in the chat box. I'm asking. I'm trying to do the multiple on hide on my system, but it's not working. So I'm guessing it's only on Office 365 for now or something. Yes, sir. Absolutely on Office 365. Better channel. Now, let me quickly show you, you know, some things you probably need to know about different, you know, version of Excel that we have. Now, let me show you my own um, account. Now, I'm using M365 apps for enterprise, okay? Now, if you check here closely, you discover that we have what is called better channel. Previously, we call it Office Insider. Okay, so I run on better channel, and the better channel is a is the version that allows you to get many updates when new features are released by Microsoft Corporation. You in the better channel, usually the fifty percent. If you are lucky among them, you have the feature. So usually for me, I'm one of the lucky 50% when a new feature is being flighted. All I need to do is to just update my office, okay? And then I'll have the new feature. So it is only available in Better Channel and also in the current channel. Now, I actually have Better Channel on this laptop and another of my laptop, I have the current channel, okay? So I've tried it on both of the versions and they are really working. So if you are using um, Office 2019, I believe, um, sorry, 20 older versions like 2013, 2017, 19, you definitely would not have it. Even other people, other segments of M365, I don't know, but I want to believe other seg segments might not have received this new feature. So definitely, it's not coming to the, the the older version. So you have to be on M365 or Office 365. Now I have what's called M365 Enterprise 5. Now the Enterprise Enterprise 5 is slightly superior to E3. We call it E5, E3, and so on. So there are more features that are available in the E5 and the E3, and so on. Okay. So I'm sorry for that. You won't have it if you're not an M365. Over to you, Mr. Mike. Okay, so uh, we have to wrap it. So, uh, okay, David, <laughs> your hand is up again. So your question. 
one. Um, can you hear me, please? Yes, yeah. please. Go ahead, sir. All right. Sorry, my question is around that um, email of a thing. Let me say, for example, I usually have um, a kind of repetitive task that I okay. send out every Friday. Is okay. it possible for me to spar automate? I mean, the email now, I can send it to every email, general email, and automate this in order that every Friday to be sending to those people without me going back to repeat it again. Thank you for that question. Now, to be frank, I haven't actually tried that, but I want to believe it should work, but I haven't tried that before. So I can't actually tell you whether it will work or not, but I want to believe it should, okay? But right. I haven't tried that Thank yet. And this is a challenge for me to, of course, go ahead and, you know, do exactly what I've just asked to check whether I can always, you know, just set up the mail and without going through the process, as you meant, without going through the process, with just a click of a button, I can just send the email address. I'll just, I'll try to figure that out. But at this moment, I can't tell you specifically whether that will work at a go or not. Thank you. Okay. So as we bring the session to a close, uh, I want to ask, uh, I know last, was it last year or early this year when we had you, you told us about your journey and your advice, but uh, okay. to be sincere, a lot of the people who are here were not there in that session. So we just want to ask you again, like an advice for people who, if they are starting their journey now, you know, uh, they want to, well, I know it's not going to be a one day, one week, or there's even if it will be possible for everybody, but they want to reach your level of, of expertise and, and, and claim, you know, your level of global um, recognition. You know, what will you advise for somebody starting now? Now, the first thing I'm going to say is for anyone who is looking at going to this kind of, you know, Excel or having a data analysis, you know, as a career is for you to be passionate about this thing, okay? My passion for Excel, as I told us in the last time, I didn't set out to do Excel. It was just, you know, I'm sorry to say a divine arrangement. I didn't plan to, you know, <laughs> do Excel. In spite of the fact that I use Excel regularly on my last paid job, I didn't plan to do this, but it was just a divine arrangement that, of course, is a script that I will just play my own part as, you know, um, God designed it. So the main thing is that if you want to go into Excel, it's a good thing or any um, data analytics tool. Of course, the main thing is to be passionate and be willing to go to the query and to be fine tuned. In other words, you need to give in to constant practice, practice and practice. I need to follow, you know, leading people like Mr. Mike, you know, is. I mean, I, I, when I saw Mr. Mike profile five times in Excel, wow, I, this is amazing. So you need to follow leading people like, you know, Mr. Mike, he has a YouTube channel. Of course, I do watch his video regularly. You know, just watch videos, follow this, this who are probably up there in Excel. And of course, if you are committed to increasing your knowledge, definitely you're going to be up there one day, okay? The room is so wide and it's available for as many people to get there, okay? Even myself, I do a lot of research on my home, okay? I still continue to practice. It's for the fact that I know some of this thing, even offhand, I do a lot of practice because Excel continue to evolve. There are many new things that are coming up virtually every month in Excel. And you need to, you know, be at the top of your game. You need to at least know all these new features. So, in fact, there are even so many new features that I can't actually tell. You know, I can't be saying it due to the, of course, the NDA um, stuff we are under. But I can tell you most sincerely that the future of Excel is so bright because there are so many new things coming up anytime from now, based on Microsoft, you know, decisions. New things coming up. So the main thing for you is to be passionate and be willing to learn. Learn. In fact, there's a saying that. You need to learn or learn and relearn in order for you to stay up there or to get up there. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. So I try to capture some of what you said and put in the chat box. Uh, so at this juncture, just one more 
chance to people in the audience. Do you have a question for Mr. David before we let him go and rest for this Sunday? <laughs> Anybody has a question? Going one. Okay. As we just round off this, I don't. I intentionally just keep some of this talk so that I don't take much of our time. But I need to let us know that it is now, you know, possible, you know, to import PDF file into Excel through the Power Query. Okay. You know, I have a little demo here. If time can permit, I can just take another few minutes and yes, I it first. Okay, so I have a data already, you know, in PDF. So all I need to do is to just come to this get data under the data tab tab. Then we click on from file and from PDF. So from there on we need to connect to the data, to the source data. So I think it's on my desktop. Let me check. Uh, okay, it's this blockchain. So easily we can connect to any data, any table that is stored in PDF. So we can see the navigator for the Power Query coming up. Then we can select the tables that we want to import into the Power Query and analyze the data. So this is coming up. It's a moment. Now you can see we have, <coughs> excuse me, we have several tables in this, you know, stuff now i'm actually in need of about three of them so i'm going to choose select multiple items so you can actually go through each of them so this is the first table okay this is the second one and i think this is going to be the, yeah this is the third one so i need the three tables so i'm just going to transform the data okay i need to actually append them in power query so i click on transform data i'm not loading directly i need to transform them first before we move them into Excel. So can you see my power query, please? I want to be sure you can see it now. Yes. Yes, you can see it. OK, thank you. Thank you. Well done. So we have, oops, I have, OK, the last time I used this, I didn't clear this data. OK, let me just delete all these queries. Okay, we just delete this, this, this. So as many of us know, Power Query is a powerful transformational tool that allows us to clean and transform our data. Let me just delete this. Okay, so these are the three queries. Okay, this is the first one, the second and the third. Now, the first we need to do is to append, that is to stake it upon each other. So you can come to the home tab here. In the combined group, we have this append as new. Or you can even come to this you know, blank cell here, or blank space, choose new query, and combine, and want to append as new. So either of the way that is suitable for you, you can append your queries or your tables. Now we are dealing with multiple tables, more than two tables. So I'm going to choose three, and I'm going to select the first one, hold my shift key, select the third one, and click on add. So we have added them to the tables to append. Finally, I click on OK. Then we have a single appended table. OK, so let me just give it a meaningful name, and let's call this um, blockchain. And very importantly, click on enter. And then we need to, of course, make sure that the data types are properly you know, set up. Now you can actually see we have this you know, icon which indicates that there is an error in our data. Okay. Now, when I scroll to this, let me scroll down. We have this null. So I'm going to get, just get down out. So I'm going to come to, you know, remove rows in the home tab here, and I want to remove bottom rows. Now, I need to specify how many rows from the bottom that I want to remove. So we need to specify how many rows to remove from the bottom. So I'm interested in removing the two, 67 and 68. Click on type in two rather, and I click on OK. And our data is now looking good. So we can see the data quality. Everything is looking fine. No error. Everything is valid. And let's just apply a proper data types. Okay, let me just make this to be a whole number. And I think everything is good. And finally, 
I'm just going to get the data into Excel. Now, there's a trick that you need to actually use if you want to load this data into an Excel, because we have four queries now, and we are interested in loading only the blockchain to Excel, not the other three individual queries or tables. And for that, I'm going to close, click on close and load tool. Now, in the import data wizard, which is coming up now, okay. Now, I'm going to create, I'm not going to load it to a table directly, because if I load it to a table, all the four queries will come up, which I don't want. First and foremost, I want to create a connection to the queries, and I click on OK. So we're going to see the queries and connection tax being coming up. So all the four queries are here. We have created connection. Now, I need to now come back to the only blockchain query or table that we want to send back to Excel. So this is it. Just right click and choose load to. Initially, we loaded to in, and to create a connection. Now, after we are satisfied this, then I'm going to choose table back. And then we can now specify we want current or existing sheets. Let me just dump this in cell um, A1. Oh, excuse me. We just delete this and dump it here. And then we can collapse this. And finally, I click on OK. As we know, this is you know structure for the name of the sheets and the cell A1 in absolute cell reference. Click OK. And okay, just a moment to finalize the process. So we can see it's actually going through the data. The longer the of course the data the time is gonna take. Now can you see that we have appended, we have been able to connect rather to the PDF file. We appended the um, three tables or queries and we load them back to Excel. And this is a new game changer in Excel. So previously it was difficult to connect to a PDF, but with this new feature coming up PDF to Excel, you can connect to any data stored in PDF to Excel. And this is super, super cool. Over to you, sir. Wow, thanks a lot. So what I've done while you are doing that last presentation, I had gone and got in all your links. So excelgetconsult.com.ng, your Twitter, your MVP link, your LinkedIn. So I've shared it uh, so people can connect to you. They can check out the services you provide also. Okay, uh, so I think some people are already even trying to connect with you already. So I want to say a very big thank you for, for your time again. For I know you are very busy. Many people will not know that it's not a, a big sacrifice to get you on a Sunday and that uh, we appreciate, you know, I, I, I very much appreciate your your generosity to us, you know, always you, in our time for us. Thanks a lot. and uh, We appreciate you and we want to say a very nice week ahead and to everybody in the house, have a very good uh, week ahead. And this job show, we are going to end the session. For those who are still interested in Power BI, there will be a session on Power BI uh, by five, by six o'clock. So maybe I'll just put it in the in the chat box. But I need to let our guest go and rest. So I need to wrap it up now. So thank you very, very much, sir. And uh, everybody you, sir. else, have a nice Sunday. And you have a wonderful week. Thank you all. God bless you. Thank Bye you very you. much. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, bye. Thank you, Mr. David. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir.